Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 22 of Galileo Conquest. Now that we've got our spacecraft starting to take shape in orbit, we have Valentina Kerman, who is going to be doing some very important engineering work. You see, we've joined everything together by these small 1.25 meter docking ports, and those are great for holding things together. However, they are a little wobbly. So now that we've docked things, we can actually start attaching struts between various places. Now on this set, on this uh, on this section, we have uh, the struts already anchored, and we just need to join the two together using a gerbil to do it. Bingo, nice and easy. Those ones were pre-anchored, but in our boxes here, in our toolboxes, we actually have a whole bunch of hardware which might come useful uh, in a long, uh, long mission. Now, uh, it took me a little while to remember how this worked, and indeed I ended up floating off with one of my struts before <laughs> figuring out how I ended up, how, how, how I had to do it right. I needed to have a tool. Because Kerbal Inventory System has of course changed since I used it last in Interstellar Quest. Yes, fond memories of slowly assembling my spacecraft in lunar orbit for investigating. But yeah, here we go, drop that on there. Drop that on there. Bingo. See that? So we're just basically strengthening up the spine of this. But once we've got these, there's other areas that we're going to need to secure. It doesn't matter if we don't get them too accurately hooked up. Because ultimately, crooked bracing is better than no bracing at all. If we uh, try to fly this thing without that, these things are going to wobble pendulously back and forth. Perhaps in a manner which might resemble certain human organs, which would not really let people concentrate on the mission too well. So, no, we're, we're going to tie this stuff down. There we go. Now, of course, this is still partially assembled and we still have more hardware to send up. But before we send anything more, we have to deal with some navigation issues for Sister Imelda. Out in the middle of nowhere, she has a, a burn which will ultimately... Well, set her on course for Tulumo, which is the... It, it is a... I think it looks larger than Gale. It looks like it has an atmosphere. It also looks like it has rings. So an interesting looking location, but this spacecraft is certainly not set up for landing, so we're obviously going to have to send another spacecraft to it at some point. We're still not done adding fuel to this spacecraft in orbit, mostly because the more fuel we have, the more comfortable I will be. This is Hell 4, which, um, yeah, has... We were still trying to figure out the exact ascent path on this thing. It obviously... <laughs> it obviously wobbled a whole lot more than I, I would have wanted. But separation of the external boosters went well, and the transition into orbit uh, it seemed to mostly go as planned. Certainly, I overcooked the ascent, but the thing was so wobbly that it was probably the safest thing to do, is to go up and then in the safe, well, in the, the less extreme environment of space where you can adjust your attitude with impunity and not have to worry about the atmosphere uh, realigning you involuntarily, yeah, there you can actually make that burn to get yourself into a circular orbit, and there, of course, finally, that'll put you on course for the target. Now, this is a second generation of the fuel tank design because, well, we decided we didn't want to be removing solar panels anymore after that. So, yeah, we shrunk the whole thing down, we uh, added a probe controller to this the first stage, and perhaps most significantly, because we are going to be using this as a vessel for transporting fuel to the, the vehicle, we uh, added some parachutes and control for that first stage. So in theory, we should be able to recover this and, uh, well, you know, make, make use of it, save some money, hopefully. I don't know, maybe not. We're going to find out. But if you look at the bottom of the flight engineer label, you'll see... This is how this is what I'm doing here is just adjusting my relative inclination, waiting for the time to relative ascending node get small, and then we flip around to point in the correct direction because of course I was pointing in the wrong direction. 
You know, you'd think I would have anticipated that, but no, apparently I completely forgot. Yeah, you know, point in the opposite direction, fire the engine, watch my relative inclination get very, very small, and then once I'm on that practically co-aligned orbit, that's where the amount of fuel required for the rendezvous becomes very, very minor. I just can... Uh, you take my time, be very, very gentle, and that of course means that I don't need the giant engine from the first stage anymore. It just takes a whole lot of patience to sit there and watch the orbits align, but first of all, before I do any of that, I'm going to get rid of this booster stage, and I want it to land on the light side of the planet, so i got to wait until I'm in roughly the right place. There we go. So now... What we want to have is, of course, the whole thing has to be pointing backwards along the orbit. And then we're going to have to very carefully ditch this spacecraft and then perform an avoidance maneuver. Because this booster stage does not have any attitude control. It does have attitude control. It has thrust vectoring. So it will be able to control its attitude once the thrusters start firing. And there it goes. But yeah, while it's in space, it has no way to control its attitude. Those uh, the thrust vectoring is only good when the engine's firing. Those uh, fins are only good when we're inside the atmosphere. And there's no reaction control thrusters. So what'll happen is we're going to flip around and soon the power of the atmosphere will catch us. And it decides that it wants to flip me that way. Great. That is, that's kind of what I was hoping for, actually. So now the only question is, based upon the um, the trajectories mod, am I going to land in the ocean, like I hope, or am I going to land over land? Again, the trajectories mod is making a prediction, but it's making prediction based upon me being in a, you know, a, a stable orbit. Here, I want to make sure I bring the whole spacecraft down intact, so I'm burning the engine to slow my velocity down, and the other thing I'm doing is I'm deliberately oscillating this thing around its axis, because the oscillations around the axis means that we're presenting a side-on aspect. We're basically increasing the amount of drag by wobbling this in reverse. Also got to point out, all my controls for doing this were reversed, which made it quite interesting, especially when, I, as you saw there, I was able to demonstrate the thing could fly there. For a second, by the way, you'll notice that I enabled uh, stability control and the whole thing just spun out of control. But yes, getting low down and it's time to deploy these parachutes here. 100 meters per second, level out, and there we go, parachutes. Beautiful, you see the shadow there? Now let the whole thing gracefully get captured and slowly descend towards the ground. And this is where I begin to wonder, should I have dis should I have landed, you know, engine first or should I have landed a nose first? My original idea was to have it go nose first because the nose might collapse and preserve the engine. But what happened was it landed perfectly fine until it fell over and didn't actually explode. Which is really not what I'm used to in Kerbal Space Program. Surely I would have expected an explosion, but no, it had to disappoint me and give me a clean spacecraft with no damage. Anyway, with that stage recovered, yeah, we're basically having to wait for the orbits to synchronize so we can perform the relevant rendezvous maneuver. This is all stuff, of course, you've seen before. Which is, of course, why I ended up cutting it out for reasons of brevity. Still, it's always nice to show the docking, because docking is where you have the great potentiality for crashing into things. You know, the blunt force rocket surgery, uh, in this case, it would be not intentional if these things collided with any force. Now, you'll notice I'm still using the docking ports on the side here, This uh, because I'm not sure whether I actually want to use these in a future upgrade to basically have more fuel tanks along the side, so... Just, uh, you know, just docking this on, we're going to refuel the spacecraft and then we'll take it out to the moons. But, uh, of course, there, that's us. Nice. Soon the Clan Rickert will be fully upgraded and we'll take it on a little cruise out to check its hardware. Because as of right now, we still haven't actually got any of our space probes to any location where we can, uh, where we can actually visit. But... But all that may soon change as Sister Assumpta is approaching the rendezvous with Thalia, which is a nearby planet in the 
uh, gale system. So, Sister Assumpta should be out there somewhere. We're time accelerating, looking for a point of light that will expand itself into a full-on planet. And it looks like a moon there. Yes, spinning around the outside. And... Oh, wait, we're going to get a Sister Assumpta SOI change warning. But we will press on until we are within the science zone of Thalia. Okay, Thalia, give us all your science. Measuring the temperature of space. Okay, we've already read that a million times. Start transmitting. Let's just verify the spacecraft is still looking full-on awesome. Yeah, it's all looking good there. Now let's take the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is, of course, zero because it's a vacuum. I'm not sure how we're supposed to get anything useful out of that, but maybe we, we might find some parts of the Gale system where there's a big ball of gas that doesn't get associated with a planet. And of course, finally, we're doing target scanning with the camera, we're trying to collect all the data all the time so that we can build all the spaceships all the time. Now, if you remember, I am playing this more or less blind. I'm not looking at the wiki or anything, which of course... <laughs> is now very old. Uh, I'm sure there are many people in the audience that uh, know exactly what to expect when they reach Thalia, but when I launched this thing, when I encountered it, I had no clue. The encounter velocity with Thalia is actually pretty high. So we're coming in at uh, 2.76 kilometers per second, and that means that we're going to need about 1.96 kilometers per second just to get the capture. We're going to swing down very close next to the planet. According to the observations we have made, there is no atmosphere to be concerned about. But look at that. Once again, developer of Galileo Planet Pack has uh, made something look awesome. So uh, I need to actually check something because my estimated burn time is 15 minutes. And apparently... Ah, there we go. The thrust limiter was down. So therefore, my... Capture time was going to be <laughs> something ridiculous, but that's fine. Now we've sorted that out. We will probably run out of fuel in this stage because we have only... We have just over a kilometer per second here. That means we have a bit more delta V required for the second stage. But we have, like, way more delta V than we need. We have over six kilometers per second of delta V. And now we're getting uh, near. So we're getting near science. Collected and recorded data... Target scanning, got all that data, sending that data back. Now, these are the cheap-ass probes right now. We don't have any of those, like, magic goo. We don't have the... or mystery goo. We don't have the uh, materials lab because, you know, we're not going to return these things. And, of course, because we're close, we get different science for different regions. This is the coagulate means. I'm... Yeah, okay, that sounds like two different words put together. I'm not sure really what the geologist that named that is trying to think of, but, uh, you know, hey, planetary scientists have been known to name features on planets after things like uh, Lord of the Rings, so why not? But right now, the geologist can go and chill out because I'm putting the spacecraft into orbit. Ah, like 36 science. Oh, that's good, because we haven't had much new science in a long time. 650 meters per second delta V left in this stage. We're going to have about 800 once this stage burns out. But uh, we should be able to get into orbit nicely. We go. Collect and recorded data. Sending that data home. Of course, that engine should be generating electric charge. I think that engine has an alternator. So that'll be helping out. Just, oh, and this is Thalia's abyss. That does not look exactly what I would call an abyss. Oh, that does look like we're getting hot for some reason. And our engines have shut off. So let's uh, ditch this. Fine. Uh-oh. Okay, yeah! We got a... We got an improperly bolted together spacecraft. Apparently we are leaving... Oh, crap. Ow. Ow. That's not good. I'm not sure that's the reason why we're getting this overheating. In fact, I'm not sure why we're getting this overheating, because we didn't get this when we were near the sun. But are, is it the planet? We don't have an atmosphere here. 
And then if it was the atmosphere, if we were plowing through an atmosphere, then the heat would surely be hitting the engine first, and the engine isn't getting heated up at all. So I'm wondering if the Galileo developer, as has, as we said, as, as we say in the current business, done a Moho, or a Mark I Moho. Does anyone remember the original Moho with a, its famous Mount Goatsey? It had an incredibly tenuous atmosphere, which would make your spacecraft overheat. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm going to work on the assumption that something like that is happening here, and I'm just going to get this spacecraft captured and no more, and hopefully we will fly out the other side. After all, our altitude is rising up at 300 plus meters per second, so... Please don't explode! Okay, we're about to explode. And there goes my space probe. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> that is... that is far from fortunate. That is not really what I wanted to have happen. The radar altimetry sensor exploded. Basically everything exploded. The spacecraft continued without any of the important electronic hardware controlling it. But it continued to heat up. We're like 400... sorry, we're like 80 kilometers up and traveling upwards at almost half a kilometer per second. Oh, and now the rest of the spacecraft is heating up. So I did not bring any radiators. Which means, I think that what we need to do is send another spacecraft with radiators. I'm pretty sure this also uh, precludes any attempt to perform a crude landing on the surface because I don't fancy having my Kerbals explode in a puff of smoke because they get overheated. Although, you know, maybe I should check. Maybe it's possible for you to attach, uh, attach a cooling system via Kerbal inventory system, right? It'd be kind of cool to see a Kerbal walking around with a giant uh, giant heat exchanger on his back. Okay, so where's this data? Uh, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. I am looking for data on Thalia. So there's no atmosphere. Yep. Oh, yes, the cursed planet. That's it. It's the cursed planet. After first tracking at a red glimmer, blah, 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 larger telescope, etc., etc. Yeah, basically, stuff. Okay. You can read the flavor text, but there's, yeah, there's no atmosphere or anything here. It, it, yeah, it looks, among other things, effectively repelling passing landers. Yeah, well, it's more it's like it's going to melt landers. I'm certainly, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But yeah, heat exchangers are probably involved. And there is an unknown object. We're going to have to get the telescope on that at some point, right? It looks white. I'm not sure why. I'm pretty sure that is just like a giant baseball in space. And I'm pretty sure that explosion is something that I wished hadn't exploded. I don't know, I think at this point, look, the temperatures are actually dropping. But the good news is that we did manage to extract some science from that fly past. That is a, uh, okay, so what are we gonna spend it on is the big question. Uh, we could get logistics, Mm, I'm still not really sure how to use that. We have some new probe bodies and sensors. We could have wheels. Lots of wheels. Heavy landing wheels. You know, I don't know about that. We could have aerodynamics. And we love flying through the air. Cutting a space through the skies like something that owns it. Graceful like a bird. Except with giant jet engines attached to it. So yeah. Let's take the wheels and, of course, the heavy aerodynamics. And that will, uh, that will of course, move us on and we'll see what happens next in episode 23. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.